Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of What Are You Going To Do About It? I'm super excited today because I have super producer Mark Bird with us. Mark, how are you today? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? Good. I am good. Thank you for joining. I know you're busy mixing and mastering and doing all that good stuff. I don't know the lingo. I'm trying to be cool right now. Nah, you was cool. You was good. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing a little bit of that today. <laughs> cool deal. All right. Well, the premise of the show is simple. We ask one question or three questions, actually. Um, what was the problem? How did you identify it? And what did you do about it? So um, before we get started, though, I, you know, I'm going to let you brag on yourself and tell everybody about. Uh, yes, you have to. You have to tell everybody about some of the artists you've worked with and um, some of the projects you've worked on. Mr. Grammy nominated super producer. <laughs> um. <laughs> I never right, this part. Um, I've I'll, I'll start this with I've been blessed to yes. work with certain artists. Um, Jeremiah is one. He was Jeremiah Cassie, fabulous. Saha Rhapsody, Kanye, Two Chains, Dr. Dre. A nice, cool little list of people. That's Some exciting. Real, real homie. So um, I'll just leave it there. <laughs> okay. What's interesting is that I know you're from Chicago. Yes. But um, you grew up for a little while in Augusta, Georgia. Yes. <laughs> so. <Bye. Hi. laughs> so, but it's cool though because you come from this this city. Being Chicago, that's known for a lot of great artists, like you mentioned, um, Kanye and, um, you know, a lot of other hip hop artists. But then, I mean, you came from the home of James Brown. So you have that influence as well. Mm -hmm. It's kind of cool to hear from both of those cities. Augusta was really, really instrumental in my whole career. Yeah. Like, even one of the first producers that I always cite as an inspiration went to school with Buck, mm -hmm. like my first favorite producer. Seriously. Wow. I always, he's always like one of the first people that I've ever heard have his own distinct sound. So I learned a lot just from him. That's I awesome. Always, always give him that praise. Cool. That's awesome. I'm sure he would. Um be excited to hear you say that publicly. <laughs> I know you probably do it privately. Nah, I do it. I, I've done it on social media. Like that's my wow. that's my dog. But yeah, cool deal. Yeah. Well, cool. I'm gonna um I'm gonna relieve you from this hot seat since you don't like talking about yourself. No. And we're gonna <laughs> switch to talking about yourself in a different way. Right. <laughs> so, I <remember. laughs> All right, so let's get into it. So what was the problem for you? And how did you identify that it was a problem? Mm, that's a good question. We, whew, I'm gonna answer this question. I'll keep it short. I mean, we as people have a plethora of problems, like different issues. Um, some issues are directly tied to others. Um, I've, I'll say the biggest elephant in the room for me to wrestle with was depression. Mm -hmm. that, that one. Um, that was the problem. So when you when you started, you know, I think it's hard because a lot of times um, speaking, I can speak for myself. When I've de been depressed, I really didn't know it at first. <laughs> it was like then one day I realized I was in the bed for like a week and I'm like wait a minute this is not normal no so, <laughs> what was it for you oh when I noticed what it was mm -hmm. ah, we're just gonna get right to it <laughs> um, suicide attempt mm. I was super young too I was like the first time Maybe 18. Mm -hmm. Fresh out of school, as a matter of fact. 
it was 99 yeah <laughs> yep it was a suicide attempt that was when i was just like okay even and even in that i still didn't exactly know what it was but it was just mm-hmm. like something is wrong to drive me to this point right and i literally bounced right back from it like nothing was wrong mm. it was like it happened the next day i was moving around like it didn't happen mm-hmm. as like you say most of us don't even know what depression is so i, was, I right. didn't know what was going on but that was that was when i in retrospect looking back at it like now i'm like okay yeah that was it that was the the light bulb. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so what did you, like, how did you handle it? I know you said that the next day you were immediately like, oh, okay. Like, um, what, I didn't, I didn't get a grip on it for a while because like I say, you don't, when you don't know what it is, you don't know how to tackle the problem. Right. So it was just something that you sweep under the rug until it rears its head again. And, um, I went, I, 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 fought with it for years before I even thought to have something to do. It, it got to the point to where like there were two other attempts after that. Mm-hmm. I can't even say it was anything that I did. It was it was the things that you know, whatever people believe in be it God or you just simply believe in the universe it was those divine interventions and the things that were placed in my life that helped me snap out of it mm-hmm. I do remember it I do remember the moment though yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I remember it clearly um of course it was when I I moved from Augusta I went back to Baltimore well I went to Baltimore for a minute but it and even then just being so alone it really started to wrestle and then I remember having a conversation with my mom and she was like you need to come home mm-hmm. and mom and let my mom let me go at 14 years old so for mm-hmm. her to say that 10 years later I was like okay something gotta be wrong I didn't even fight her I just went I was like okay and I moved back and that's when it really sank in okay this is something is really wrong like you say I would literally sleep during the day I would get up, play with my nieces and nephew, and at night when those thoughts would happen, I would make music through the entire night until the next day where I was like too physically tired to do anything to myself. And I would sleep, wake up around one, two in the afternoon, play with my nieces, and that became a cycle. Mm -hmm. Um, It was a... I'm trying to keep it short. So it was a lot of stuff that happened in between, but there was a guy that was a friend of my mom's and he wanted to manage my music career. And at that time, I didn't care about music. I was literally just doing it to keep my mind idle. Right. So he um he came to me and he was like, let me show you. And I was like, man, I don't care about the stuff. And he was like, no, man, let me show you your worth out here. And uh, I remember he he paid me for a record and he didn't rap he just did it just to show me and I was just like okay whatever and we met with some guys well some guys that he knew one of the guys played for the Chicago Bears at the time and he was doing off-season training we went down to Florida I worked with him because he had a record label and they, that was like my first music money it was a crazy check um and it wasn't the money. It was literally just the fact that somebody saw value in what mm-hmm. I contribute to the world. Mm-hmm. At that time, I was like, maybe I should take a look into myself and see see this value myself. And that was literally the thing that changed it all. Mm. That's amazing. I always credit... Um, I don't know if you had him, but I always credit Mr. Barnwell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> he was the one that really, you know, when we were in high school, he was the one that saw something in me. Yeah. Um, and it really, you know, he introduced me to theater. And that's what saved my life. 
So, you know, I people always talk about it, but from firsthand experience and now hearing you, it just uh, kind of reinforces how the arts yeah. can really be healing, you know. Yeah, it literally saved my life. Like Literally, yeah. Literally. Like, like I, I feel you because yeah. I'm right there with you. Literally yeah. saved, you know, saved our lives, and and many others can relate to that. Mm-hmm. Um, so at that point, okay, so you see, someone else sees value in you, which mm-hmm. in turn helps you to see you to see the value in you. Mm-hmm. Um, what did you decide to do? Like, you know, did you seek therapy at some point or? You know, did you find your own healing, um, reading, studying? Like, how how did you go about, you know, coping? And how do you cope with it today? Because it, what I've learned is that, you know, every now and then, the, the whole reason for me starting this web series is because I was finding myself in a place and I was like, ah, no, nope, mm-hmm. I got to do something. And so, you know, just doing this, um, seeking therapy for me, uh, those are the things that really helped me. So yeah. what are you doing for yourself? Uh, coping was, <laughs> it's funny, <laughs> gotta, gotta put you in some situations, take you out of some stuff. But, so my form of coping at that time, I ended up <laughs> meeting a woman and I started going to church for mm-hmm. her. Mm-hmm. Initially. Then my spirituality started to grow. Mm. And me and her actually parted ways because it was like I realized that, okay, you, know, you were the person that was supposed to get me here. Mm. Mm-hmm. And I, I understand that. As much as I can, you know, show love to you and appreciate you, you were literally just supposed to get me here. Mm. And I got to the church and I had a moment there and then I left. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, Nah, it's, you know, it's a bigger level of spirituality that I seek. And I started to find it. And that became my coping. And then after that, like, again, art. My art started to take shape. Like, I started to be able to articulate my feeling Mm -hmm. in the art. Mm -hmm. So then it just went up notches and levels. And then that just really became the thing me for a long time so later in life like maybe like like two years ago (laughs) I just started going to therapy that was like possibly the greatest thing I've ever done in my life Mm -hmm. this is beautiful (laughs) (laughs) my therapist is like (laughs) my first session she was like I've never seen anybody have such a breakthrough in the first session yeah. Uh, she asked me one question and I talked for like an hour and a half mm-hmm. and I figured out so much stuff about my life and I was just like she was like, <laughs> wow I was like oh my god I gotta go she was like what are you doing I gotta go apologize to like a million people right now oh my gosh <laughs> Cause I figured out I was like yo it was me I figured out why this is why I did it I'm sorry look I didn't know so therapy reading um, running, yes, all of that is like mm-hmm. part of my coping now. Like, wake up, I run a few miles. Like I told, I told my homies, I was like, well, me running is not because I'm trying to be slim out here. This is mm-hmm. mental health. Like when I run, I'm just, I free, I'm free. Yeah. I let it out. And of course, art still, I'm always creating. That's like, I put it all there. So yeah, I found a lot of different coping mechanisms. And just having a strong support system, like people that you can call and be like, yo, I'm in this space. All right, mm-hmm. um, come over or I'm on the way there. Um, simple things like, you know, make sure like you surround yourself with a support system of people that always, that act as a mirror. They always show you that value. Mm-hmm. So I always go back to that very first lesson of that value. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Question for you. Now, you said that um, your mom, um, I don't know if she was the first person who noticed that something was wrong, but you said she noticed something was off and she told you to come home. Mm -hmm. Um, And you also mentioned that you have a a good support system. 
So we know like specifically in the black community when it comes to mental health, I think we're just now catching on to, wait a minute, (laughs) mental health is important. Um, And uh, therapy has always been kind of taboo. I think people are just coming around to accept that in our community. Um, How, I guess in the beginning, not so much now, because like you said, you have a strong support system. How did your (laughs) friends, or people who said they were were your friends, how did they react? Like, was there, was it like, was there an understanding that something was wrong, you know, and you needed help? Or was it more like, oh man, you'd be all right. You know, just pray uh, about it or something. Nine, I'll, I'll go so far as to say 99.78% of people <laughs> in my life didn't know. Mm. Nobody knew. Nobody knew. So what was it that uh, we wear the mask, that grin and lies? Was it was it that every day? So you were good at hiding it from everybody. Mm. Nobody knew. Um, down to the guy that I told you about that played for the Bear, mm-hmm. my manager, um, the guy that wanted to manage me at that time. It wasn't until maybe like. a a year or two ago that I put up a social media post Mm. talking about mental health and suicide that they even knew that that's what I was going through. Wow. The entire time. This guy Mm. is like energy. He's like with me every day. He's booking me shows. Mm. He's making sure my my project gets done. He's making sure it gets done to the world. He's taking me around the entire city introducing me to every person business owner this person that person he was with me all the time and he never knew mm. nobody so how, did, how did they respond when they found out how did people respond um more so like they just hit me like yo i had no clue like mm-hmm. i'm just grateful you're here mm-hmm. <laughs> i i didn't i didn't know how to articulate to y'all mm-hmm. that something was wrong i just I was on idle autopilot. I was just mm-hmm. doing what I felt like I was supposed to do every day. Mm-hmm. But you know, I, internally, I, it didn't feel right. I appreciate this conversation um, because here you are going through your whole life. And like you said, you know, it wasn't until two years ago, really, about two years ago that you revealed this. I think it's so important that people understand that all of us can be the face of depression like it doesn't have a specific look you no. know <laughs> like i think people you know when they think about mental health challenges they think about you know people acting erratically or you know doing something crazy or whatever and the fact of the matter is there are a lot of people who are suffering who are just kind of like walking there and smiling their way through life and Robin have- williams yeah, no. great example Every time we seen Robin Williams, he was smiling, yeah. putting on. And yeah. Or the, the young down. lady that just uh, um, uh, died from suicide, the Miss USA. I Miss believe. USA, yeah. Yeah. You just never know. Like, you just never know. I was, I was always like chilling, cooling. Like mm-hmm. if you were around me at that time, you would have never known anything was wrong. Because I look back at those moments and it's just like, I didn't know anything was wrong. So how could anybody else know? Yeah. I didn't even realize. Like now I'm like, yo, remember that time? Bro, I was Mm -hmm. going I'm sorry. (laughs) Yeah. Like I said, I'm dead serious. After my therapy session, I was doing a lot of apologizing. Like, hey, man, bring it in. I'm going to recognize now what I was dealing with and that I wasn't healed from this thing. So mm-hmm. I put you through this. So I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You don't That's, need to know. Yeah, you don't. And then you're so used to, you know, this is your everyday. Yeah. This is your life. So how, how do you even know this isn't normal? Yeah, <laughs> like, I, I don't know that I'm not supposed to feel like this. Exactly. You don't know. Yeah, that that's another reason why I, I um, you know, I always advocate. I'm like, I, I debate with my husband all the time, and I tell him, I'm like, everybody needs to go to therapy. Everybody, <laughs> like everybody needs to go, because like sometimes you sometimes you don't know you don't know what you don't know, period. 
Um, and a lot of times, you know, seeking out therapy, having someone that's, uh, that's on your side, but they're also objective, sometimes they can reveal things to you that right. you didn't even realize. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah. So and good. having and having an internal clock is very important, like knowing, mm -hmm. knowing yourself, learn yourself. Like a lot of people, especially these days, we we focus so much on building relationships with other individuals that we neglect the relationship with ourselves. True. Once I started to nurture that and learn myself, like I started to be able to catch it. Like yesterday, prime example, yesterday I was like, all right, I'm not leaving my house. Today is mental health care day. I'm a chill. I just felt like I needed to sit back from the world. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna watch movies all day. I'm gonna eat me something nice. I'm gonna read and I'm gonna refocus, recalibrate, re because I'm like, I feel a little off. Mm. Let, let me, okay. And I know what it is. Let me have that moment. And sure enough, I had that moment yesterday. Woke up today. I was like, all right. Hold it. Let's get to it. And woke awesome. up like a completely different individual, like knowing when something is off because I've taken that time to learn myself, to mm -hmm. actually build that relationship relationship with myself. So I'm just like, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, so like I, and the other thing now with me, I'm very vocal about it. So it's just mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. nobody's left in the dark. So like, if I'm having that moment, I'll hit people like, yo, I'm having a moment. It's nothing like the moments from before. Don't mm -hmm. worry. Not gonna do anything, but you might not hear from me for a couple of days just because I need to be with myself. Mm -hmm. I need to be at peace. I need to have peace of mind, peace of spirit, peace of soul. Don't worry, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. And then I'll pop back out like a couple of days later, like, all right, I did what I needed to do. Mm -hmm. Now we can continue on with doing what we need to do. As mm -hmm. people, yeah. I do yeah. that all the time. Yeah. That's why I disappear from social media too. So I'm like, ah, I'm out. <laughs> I know, but one thing that is consistent is just about every day you usually post, I deserve it. Yeah. And so that is like, I don't know, I appreciate that so much because it is a, a reminder to people that you deserve it, whether it's you deserve success, you deserve to be healthy, you deserve to be taken care of, you deserve to be loved, all of those things, mm -hmm. like all of the things you deserve it all. So it is, um, it's a nice nudge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that became a that was actually like that started because of when I was much heavier, every time I worked out, I would tell myself I deserve to treat my body well. I deserve mm -hmm. to feel good. And then before I knew it, I would wake up and subconsciously I would post that before I even got out the bed. Mm -hmm. Like, all right, somebody else needs to read this. And then I remember at one point I wasn't doing it as often and I remember my mom called and she was like hey you didn't post I deserve a thing you know people I'm looking forward to that so are mm -hmm. other people I was like you know what you mm -hmm. so I started to do it more often than not um even like this particular year I can honestly I kept track of it I haven't missed one single day this year right. at all because mm -hmm. like I was like yeah I'm about to I'm about to go at it this year. I'm gonna miss a few days because I'm about to take a little social media hiatus. Mm -hmm. That's a, actually I might give my password to somebody and let them do. Yeah, get but your people into that. Yeah, but I don't want to. <laughs> you know, I, I take my breaks just because mm -hmm. it's important. I'm very conscious of what I feed myself. Exactly. I'm like eh, nah, I'm tired of. It. Right. Tired and, of that, and that that is a part of taking care of your mental as well. Mm -hmm. so. People dieting is not just what you eat; it's what you. Eat. Yep, <laughs> what you let into your yeah. eye gates and ear gates. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I'm very conscious of that. So, if you had any advice um, that you wanted to leave people with, what would that be? Um, a couple things. Um, first thing is to build that relationship with yourself. Take that time with yourself learn you because if you learn you then you'll learn when something is not right you'll learn when anything is off like the slightest thing 
and doing that um, preventative maintenance, it, it, you're, you're proactive instead of reactive. So you can catch things before they even get to that point that I was at. How, how do people do that? How do you learn you? How do you suggest people go about doing that? I spend time with myself. Like, I really like, okay, what is it that I really like? What makes me happy? What makes me tick? Therapy is a good way to learn yourself mm -hmm. because honestly, in my opinion, that's what a good therapist does. A good therapist just helps you answer questions about you. That's all I did in all my therapy sessions. I would ask a question and then I would figure out the answer. My therapist literally was like, I made her job easy. because She would probably ask one or two questions in the whole session because I'm discovering so much about myself. It's always that need of pulling back those layers. I'm not afraid to, okay, what am I afraid of? Or what bothers me? What is really, okay, I'm gonna peel back every single layer. I'm gonna mm -hmm. discover all different factions of myself. And I'm gonna figure out what I like, what I don't like. Uh, the pandemic was great for me because mm -hmm. I literally, like, I remember calling my mom and I was like, yo, and she was like, what's up? I was like, you ever sat with yourself so long that you got tired of your own mess? Mm -hmm. She was laughing so hard. I was like, I'm sick of me. And she was like, what? And I was like, yo, all of the stuff that I've done improperly, I'm tired of me. Mm -hmm. I gotta fix that. Mm -hmm. Like I literally, but that came from sitting with myself, learning myself, looking at my maneuvers, analyzing my behavior, analyzing my relationships with people. Where did it go wrong? Did I contribute to the wrong? How did I contribute to the wrong? Okay, this is a pattern. Okay, I don't like that thing about me. Mm -hmm. Let me change this thing. That Having that, um, don't be afraid to tell somebody, anybody, be it a stranger, be it somebody that you look to that inspires you. Reach out to somebody if you're ever in that space or you feel like it's a space that you don't know how you're going to navigate. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of us out here that will love nothing more than to help. Mm -hmm. But I tell people all the time, like, Yo, if you can't talk to your family or your friends, and you just happen to see me, holla at me. Because look, as as a as a man of my people and all people, I need all of my folks to survive. I need for us to continuously get better to make the generations after us better and better. So if I can lend my hand by any way, yes, reach out. If it's just a conversation, do that. Find somebody to talk to. It doesn't matter who it is, as long as you can confide in somebody that can help you out, do that. Okay. Those are like my two biggest things. Those are your two biggest things. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you. This has been uh, uh, very enlightening. It was a pleasure. Uh, it was a pleasure. I appreciate you so much. Um, and it's good to see. It's good to see a man be vulnerable and transparent and open. So. I do appreciate that. And I'm sure that our viewers will as well. Man, I, I pray so. I just hope if somebody listening that that's in this space, take this conversation and come come to the other side. Yes. You can. Trust me. It's, it's over here. You can do it. I believe in. All right. Tell everybody what, um, well, first of all, I guess, Tell everybody how they can contact you via social media. And then also, if there's anything that you are working on that you can share, let us know about that as well. Social media is, <laughs> everything is the same. Um, I am Mark Bird. I-A-M-M-A-R-K-P-Y-R-D. That is any social media that I may have, whatever it is, I'm going to be under that name. Branding is important. Mm -hmm. The brand. That's why I never stray away from that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that's how anybody can reach me. Just any any social media platform under that. Um, as far as like what I'm working on, um, besides the stuff that I am, it's a lot of 
non-disclosure agreements floating around. <laughs> You're like, Shh. right. Um, I, I'm one of those. I don't like to talk about it too early. I don't like to talk about it until it's done. I got you. Uh, the, the the industry is different. It's like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. just being transparent. You yeah. might not know you made an album until the album comes out. Right. Like at the very moment. Yep. Like, I have to go like anything that I've ever worked on, I have to go and listen to it when it comes out and be like, oh snap, that's my record right there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, guys, I'm on such and such's album. Like, <laughs> you didn't know. Like nobody knows until it comes out. Right. Um but I do have an artist that I produce for, so we are working on his album. And that will be very much a treat. Yeah. That so, is so we just gotta stay tuned, essentially, is what you're saying in five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's it. I will never let the cat out of the bag until, you know. There might be a picture or two floating around that will allude to what I'm working mm-hmm. on, but it, I'm not gonna say nothing until it releases. Yeah. The only thing I know that's for sure is my artist, and that's coming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This the entertainment business as a whole is it's a different animal. Very different. So, yeah, and the music business even more so. So. Yes, people, don't get into this business. <laughs> <Don't do it. laughs> Find something else to do. That's so funny. Or at least do it, maybe do it on the side. It's a lot less stressful. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> All right. Well, we are going to end this. I appreciate you so much. I thank you. Uh, I, I really thank, thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you for having me. Of course. Of course. You know, we go back. So. Yeah. <laughs> So I appreciate you again. I appreciate your honesty, your transparency, your openness. Um, and yeah, just being just I, I don't I don't know if you know how many people you help um, and inspire just by being um, transparent with your story. So I think a lot of times we don't know. Sometimes we don't even people don't even talk to us about, you know, what we said or did that that brighten their day or, you know, um, yeah. encourage them to go get the help they need. So, um, you know, I, I take it, you know, I, I'm always like, if I can just help one person. <laughs> yeah, I've done my job. I've done yep. what I'm supposed to do. Exactly. That's, that's exactly how I see it. Yep. And and I do believe that we'll at least help one. Yeah. So, with that's, your story. That's, that's it. I've done what I was supposed to do. Exactly. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I appreciate you so much. Uh, Again, you know, the show is called What Are You Going to Do About It? Um, And we just always want to spread uh, positivity and solutions. And also just to let you know that you're not alone. You're not the only person going through it. There are many people who are dealing with some of the same situations um, and having some of the same challenges that you're having. So, again... um, Thank you, Mark. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, until next time. All right. Okay. All right.